Hey there, boys and girls. Ah, uh, sat down, and I felt I needed to to share a little bit of uh, that that good old time religion with you today. So, sure shit, why not? Shall we begin? Simple reading of the good book. Chapter 7 Salvation, One Dollar, and the Perils of False Slack. I am here with basically nothing to say, and that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Are you saying what you really mean? Do you even know what you were really thinking? That's J.R. Bob Dobbs from his first lecture on positive thinking versus sales. Free! Slack is one hell of a trickster. It is, in fact, all this stuff about Slack being internal nirvana of the mind is so much purity crap. Come on, snap on it. Living in a state of mental bliss may help. But let's face it, it isn't real. In discussing true Slack, we aren't talking about simply improving your imagination and self-image. These are mere images. We're talking about major material advancement in the physical world. Money. Sex. We're talking about actual miracles and more fun in the objective, sensible universe. Straight A's for no effort in the school of hard knocks itself. We're talking something for nothing. Well, not for nothing. But it's the best deal for your money from any mind control cult. Don't fool yourself. No religion has ever actually made anybody more free, just more able to rely on that particular system, more dependent. That's what makes us different, and we admit it. This alone makes it work. The idea is that you depend on Bob, but Bob, Bob's addiction is rather compelling compared to any other form of guru abuse. Money can buy slack. Slack can be sex. Sex is slack is Bob. In Jehovah's great office in the sky is a ledger showing the debts and credits of men's souls, a record of all emotion transactions, and giving of taking of slack, oral sex, etc. Some have too much slack, which is really no slack at all. Without the bad, one cannot appreciate the good. Therefore, if you're healthy, become an alcoholic. If you're charismatic, become a creep. It will awaken you. What's wrong with materialism, per se, is the wrong kind of materialism? Pink materialism. The materialism of fat butts on school teachers, of cutesy smiled gift shops and malls, of head shops with $200 cocaine mirrors. The point is, earth must be purged. We will not kill the guilty, nay, 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 but merely enslave them, make them pets of them. We will protect them, watch over them, and shepherd their lives and his flock. But do this, we must cast the money changers from the temple and burn the record albums of the pink. We must stop acting like they expect us to act. The church is not for austerity, not by a long shot. We are merely against false slack. The con brainwash that says more of that and they sell, will make you happier. We don't insist on nature, per se, that we must return to, to dismantle Western technology, its false extremism. Technology can serve us, so can money. It is that authority that must be dismantled into smaller pockets. Each man and woman a king, each dog and child a serf. You can be what... You can be... You can be what you want. Bob really doesn't make his followers rich. We can prove this, but he also makes them poor. For riches aren't enough. Man needs slack. Earth needs slack. This logic is inescapable. Money can buy slack in doses of certain kinds. More often, however, it is squandered on slack abuse and technological goods. We are the patriopsychotic and necromaterialists. Love the material world. Money is not only important, it is damn near all important. And thus we waste it on is a kind of blasphemy. But don't anyone with any sense at all knows it isn't how you spend your money, but it's how you spend your time. Who cares about how much money you make? In these times, the rich are as broke as the poor, unless they're conspiracy rich. When death and the grim bill collector comes for you, will you be quaking and regretting all the time you wasted trying to achieve something instead of just having fun? There may not be much time left. So you damn well better either help forestall the cataclysm or at least enjoy the fleeting moments that you have left. In fact, the enjoying does the forestalling. 
When you get more slack, more slack is also generated into the world around you. Sure, these teachings are intricate and contradictory. Why not? Other, religion, other religions may be simpler, but they only give the illusion of results. They are bad maps, two-dimensional diagrams, nothing like the real terrain. But the subgenius, the map, is the actual terrain. Going without Bob's words is like taking a long journey without a map. You'll backtrack, wander aimlessly, go over rough and bumpy roads on irritating detours. Don't let yourself live to be 90 and only have 10 years worth of slack. Don't spend most of your waking hours doing something that you hate. You can suddenly quit your job and take your family on the road with every bit as much security. As you are depending on it in corporate America with its voluntary slavery, the system is the perpetual breakdown slash replacement turnover cycle. Well, it's overheating, and sooner or later, something's really going to turn it over. Has fear of the unusual prevented you from joining the Church of the Subgenius? Or if you are already a member, has the conspiracy harassment kept you from enjoying your full rights as a subgenius? Do they constantly reinforce your conspiracy programming by making it financially necessary that you attend endless pinkins, gatherings of dull, blanoid, normalcy dupes who bore you to death, making you sit there while you secretly daydream and intimate about the subgenius. For instance, are you having trouble getting a good job or laid? Is it incredibly difficult for you to relate? Is your mail being opened? Have you secretly, have you recently had a close call of the third kind? Or have they stepped in their harassment even further? Have they sent Nig's henchmen after you to tear out your tongue, gouge out your eyes, and set fire to your home, impale your mate, rape your children, and burn your secret stash of subgenius propaganda? Or are they using even subtler, yet more heinous methods, such as psychic ether disruptors, or discombobulate your sphere of causality, slanting your luck plane their way, and throwing you out of sync? It's important you know these things. It's important you hear these things. That's why I do these things. Praise Bob, or kill me, or don't.